Hello, hello and welcome boys and girls, I'm playing Valley of Wonders, first campaign map in Age of Wonders 4. I'll play it as fast as possible, so it is some sort of speedrun for me. I believe some other players, or maybe even you, can do it faster. So let's have little competition between us. You can of course play your own setup, but I started with a human, because it's basic. Fast recuperation is super useful for healing, and extra XP for our heroes is always welcomed. I'm not sure is this really important to pick any specific culture for first map, so I took Philu. I took Imperium to have more gold at the very beginning of the game, and Fable Hunters to a double reward from cleaning nodes. And at last, Tom of the Face. It gives extra healing for our heroes and extra healing for our armies. Unfortunately, we can play only a champion, so I took it. And to be honest, Sword and Shield is one of my favorite compositions for a hero. It was the time when the raw forces of magic returned to Athla. The seal that had protected the world was shattered. The cosmic currents thereby unleashed shaped the land, changing what was whilst returning what once may have been. In the wake of this new genesis, the great empires of the Third Age fell into decline, bringing on an era of re-exploration and expansion. The time for peaceful discovery was brief, for the ancient wizards of the Second Age broke free from their eldritch prisons in the depths of the Astral Sea. Their strength regained, they set out to rule over the surviving peoples as God Kings, or Godia. There was little divine about them. Yaka, Nimue, Carissa, a pantheon of pretender gods. They were scarred, corrupted, haunted by millennia of torment, and ready to unleash their newfound powers against whoever dared stand in their way. Yet the wizard kings were not unchallenged. Mortal champions rose to the defense of their people, rebuilding their realms and learning to channel the currents of magic. This is the story of one such champion. While traveling through the Valley of Wonders in search of a new home, tragedy befell his tribe, its elder slain by a magical being. After inheriting both the elder's throne and his powerful tome of magic, the young champion had to rise up and protect his people from the dangers that awaited. So we're starting campaign on a coastal map with a few simple tasks to be done. First one is to build farms and kill some intruders, those three units that lighten it up with a grail. Somehow, even on a hard difficulty level, we have 300 calls in our bank, so we can buy second hero immediately. And with an army of no more than three units to not spread XP among non-hero units, we failed out of combat successfully. I don't know how is it even possible, but with our setup and a double hero company, we should easily win this. We just regroup and choke them between those buildings so they won't be able to surround us. And with the help of priest that buffed us previously, we just crush their ranks. A bit damage were taken, but Panar Lord easily outhails it. And after a couple of turns, we was able to win this battle, losing only few HPs. Winning another battle, I got level 2. We can use unique Feudal Lords promotions. I choose Lord of War because it gives us more movement points and extra healing. And we're about to go on a crusade. Undying Loyalty, also unique for a Feudal culture, a nice support skill. Because I'm a Feudal, I added Farm turn 1 and finished our first task. Pick extra food as a reward and boom, it's a 3 pop city turn 1. Awesome. Army Hail is an awesome spell which helps us on a distant quest. Our goal for now is clear surroundings and find out the main enemy of this map, Yaka. I leveled up after a few outer resolving combats and Mending Touch was learned. An awesome support healing skill which costs you no action points at all. 
City State quest was super easy, just kill three astral creatures. Another after resolving combat won. I decided to pick an awesome sword that they offered us as a reward. But it appears to be not a sword but a spear that can't be used with a horse. So it appears I got no reward at all because mobility is way more important than a few extra damage points. Jonas the Strong reached level 5 and he only could summon undead so I picked it. Now we're even stronger in our outer resolving combats. Feudal Ruler is another good trait in a support skill for a feudal culture. Day 4. We've met the main protagonist of the entire campaign. She offered us to clear the Tower of Destinies. Which, of course, I agreed to do. After Army Hill, I was lucky enough to learn Faithful Whisperers. It's a great spell to interact with the city-states and one of our tasks is to suzerain the city-state. During this quest we first time met Yaka. I wasn't ready to fight him now, so retreated with a scout and decided to clear a bit more nodes to get more XP for my heroes. Outer resolving for the high tier heroes is super cool, you just get stuff for free and some experience of course. Tower of Destiny was not a hard quest at all, I cleared it with the two heroes and a support unit. I paid some mana to make this quest easier, I was playing a lord not a wizard king, so I couldn't even use that mana in combat. Another after reserve victory and the reward. A Gaia chosen major race transformation, which can be cast for free. That's truly awesome reward, don't forget to pick it. And another reward from Sundren. I choose the Sun Spear. Finally, city was repelled from the ruins and I can add third hero. I had cool bow, so I decided to pick the archer guy. Isidore the Agile. Do not waste more time, I besieged Oracloom while was waiting of Isidore's arrival. In just a two turns, Oracloom failed. I learned fruitful integration so we could migrate in this city faster. Few turns later, we reached Yaka Citadel and attacked his vanguard detachment. Once again, outer resolving combat with a high tier hero with a couple of summons leaves no chance to those guys. Yaka had few more good armies, so I decided to wait for a reinforcements before the final charge. But I paid a price for this information. Our scout was brutally slaughtered. I besieged Yakatan day 16. I was hoping that reinforcements will arrive while I'm besieging city. Also, I could summon few tier 1 beasts with the help of Tom of the Beast, but Yaka decided to counter fences. With the terrible results of outer resolving, I decided to take a manual combat. So our combat starts with the summons. We can summon some undead, skeletons and elementals. This will greatly reinforce our army. For no reason, Yaka charged our left solo. I responded by moving cavalry and heroes there. Brainlet's mage dived in, dealing some damage to our troops, but nothing crucial. Using Marcus' prey spell significantly increased incoming damage. With a couple of shots, main hero were slain. Only hard target left is a phoenix. I surrounded next turn and was able to slay the beast. But he resurrected as a phoenix next turn, dealing massive fire damage to surrounding units. He even killed an archer. What a giga shot, dude. I'd like to have a phoenix in my own army. Rest of the combat was quite one-sided. I used rejuvenation to heal units, block and slay his casters with the cavalry units. I had to pay the price for such a great victory. Main hero died. Or at least was wounded. He of course will return in a three turn spot. It's only one turn till the walls will fall. So I entered the Yakatan city, turn 20, and achieved victory. I'm not sure how fast it is, but it is way faster than I did for the first try. By the invasion of Yaka, the spark of divinity was ignited, and a new Godia ascended to the cosmic pantheon. Beyond the veil of mortality, the pantheon represented an entirely different world. For while the Godia could walk the realms as gods, 
They had to abide by rules when dealing with their own kin within the Astral Sea. In Magehaven, a world near the center of the Astral Sea, the Godia of the Pantheon had established their Forum of Council. It was a place warded by an ancient spell. Stripped of their abilities to harm one another, even the fiercest enemies could meet up in Magehaven. Here, the Godia constructed their world gate, through which they embarked on their journeys of exploration and expansion that defined the fourth age of wonders. <laughs>